Hi Fellas and here from Now Spinning Magazine with another video looking back at the band Free. I've covered Highway, tons of sobs and the box set Songs of Yesterday and I've also looked at Second Street by Backstreet Crawler. So those of you who watch those videos know that Free and all the individuals that created that band and especially the guitarist Paul Kossoff who's in my top five guitarists of all time you'll know how much these musicians and these albums these seven special albums mean to me and um, I'm going to eventually cover them all I suppose I should really try and do them all in sequence but it's I find it draining sometimes talking about um, about Kossoff so why have I picked on Heartbreaker next? Um, I think because it, this one is another album that means such a lot to me. And I know that at the time, um, there was a lot of turmoil going on. When this came out in 72, obviously Paul Kossoff was, wasn't very well. And, you know, and how he must have felt from the fact that he'd been almost basically replaced. When it says who's in the band, it says Paul Rogers playing um, lead vocals, guitars, Simon Kirk. Tetsu is on bass and Rabbit on keyboards and then it says Paul Kossoff plays on tracks 2, 3 and 4 on side 1 and 2 and 4 on side 2. So and then Snuffy Walden plays on Easy My Soul, Easy On My Soul. So he'd almost been replaced or not in this band that meant so much to him. Now with these reviews that I do um, on albums like this um, I, I don't go into detail about the stats and, and what was going on too much. I try and talk about it, about me personally, of what it was like for me, what the music has meant to me. Um, I think that keeps the, it keeps me um, not kind of getting my facts wrong, but also I'm talking from the heart then on, on what these songs meant to me. So I became, I became aware of, as you know, I became aware of Free in the early 70s. I was very young, obviously, all right now, and I bought the Free Story and, and stuff. So the, the, the track on the Free Story from this album was Come Together in the Morning, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. And I've talked about that several times already. But I remember on top of the pops when, when Wishing Well appeared. Uh, in the in the in the in the charts, and I loved Wishing Well. It was such a heavy song, really. You know, I was you know this is what was seventy three when this came out, wasn't it? Um, in the charts, and and it was such a powerful song. It's a very simple riff, but what I'm going to say here is that I've heard versions of this by Blackfoot and Gary Moore, and it sounds like um, it's just a plodding rock song. Bear with me. This is just my feeling. But when Free played it, it sounded not like a simple riff. Or it sounded like the riff was part. Of the, the riff was part of the song, but the song was part. Of the, it just sounded part of the thing. Whereas when people cover Wishing Well, uh, I've never heard a version that I've liked. In fact, I haven't even really liked the song that much. It seems as if they don't understand the the emotional aspect of what was going on. Great players. I love Blackpool, and obviously Gary Moore's a genius. Uh, was a genius, but um, but no, nothing can compare to this original song. And it was also the um, very much like a year later, you know, Paul Rogers would be with the stadium sounding rock, rock band that was Bad Company, totally different beast, and I love Bad Company. But but here and uh, and a lot a lot to do with free, obviously, because I've mentioned this before with Paul Rogers is when he let go of the rail and just sang from the heart and whatever was going on in his life. So every time you see something on songs, yes, it says take seven or something. Um, you can just know that every all the other versions will be different because of how he would interpret it. It could have been how he spoke to his friends that morning, how he felt, you know, how he spoke to his girlfriends or whatever affected how he sang and performed in that moment. Probably one of the most mindful vocalists of all time. But there was something about this album and his voice and the production that maybe, I was thinking maybe because I was so young or um, when I started to listen to this, I was in my late teens when I got this on album. 
obviously only wishing well, but things like everyone has a wish, everyone has a dream, you know, the, the, the fade out, that just resonated with me so much. You know, but, you know, you've always been a good friend of mine, but you're always saying farewell. The only time that you're satisfied is with your feet in the wishing well. To throw down your gun, you might shoot yourself. And, you know, is it about Paul Kossoff? Um, you know, you just I know what you're wishing for, love in a peaceful world. It, it just, I just felt that. Um, but but, it, but it, it's absolutely fantastic track. But the next one was the one that I knew from the free story, which was come together in the morning. And this is an amazing song. Um, and the, the, the key point of this song is Paul Kossoff and that guitar solo. If you can imagine tears coming out of your speakers, I don't mean them pouring out like a leak, but literally starting to build up around the rim of, that, of your speaker cone and then building up to such a point that one just drops out and slowly just pours out across the floor. That is the guitar sound. That is the sound of Kossoff's heart breaking or trying to express himself when, he, when there are no words to put together in a sentence that can be short or long enough to try and put across what he's trying to say and he does it with these guitar notes. The song is a sad song. It makes me sad to think of you because I understand the things you do. There's no one to take your place and in my life alone I hide my face. Um, there was a time it's in the past, I thought our love was going to last, but now you say you're torn in two, that's what my love has done to you. And at the end, when, he, when Roger starts to sing more softly, more kind of in the background, uh, it makes me sad to think of you again. The guitar is like, it's the, sound of a, it's the sound of a human heart breaking with a guitar, with a guitar doing it. And I have thousands of albums and I've heard thousands of albums and the guitar solo on this track um, is just beyond words really. I mean, I think there's, there's, there's an error on it, it kind of clunks uh, I've mentioned this before. There's like a bit where, it, but it doesn't matter because you, because you're not just hearing, you're not just hearing the music coming out of the speaker picked up by the microphone. You're hearing the musician, you're hearing the musician connect his fingers to the fretboard and his plectrum to the strings. You're hearing Paul Kossoff is in your is in the room with you, and I just. You know, it doesn't matter whether you had a girlfriend or boyfriend at the time, you, you recognised that. You recognised that it could have been you thinking about yourself as you got a bit older or, you know, it, it's just, it was just amazing. The next song, Travelling in Style, is more upbeat, which is great um, as well. But it was the one after that, Heartbreaker, because there was a version of Heartbreaker on the free story, but it was pale comparison to this, written solely by Paul Rogers. Um, and the sun is shining, but I don't seem to be able to reach my heart. My heart is cold. The sun is shining, but I don't seem to reach my heart. That, that I wasted my whole life trying to make a new start, trying to make, and the way Roger sings this, I, I just latched onto this. I used to, this is before, um, before Walkman. So I used to have, um, where I used to work in a factory, on, I used to catch a bus and have like a, one of these cassette players where you just press the buttons on. I used to have a singular earpiece and play this on the bus on, on the way to set me up for the morning. And um, like a blind man, my little house is on fire, just like a blind man, um, you know, I'm burning my own eyes out trying to reach the door. It just, I just felt it. And it's, it's great, again, a, quite a heavy riff really as well. On side two, there was a track called Muddy Water, which lyrically, I liked, but I didn't like the song that much. So sorry if some of you have said that's my favourite song ever. It just didn't do that much to me at the time. Whereas the next three totally did, which was again, The Common Mortal Man was written by um, John Bondrick Rabbit. And this was about having a, a panty job really, a job where you didn't like it 
and I didn't like my job. I worked in factories at this time. And so this whole idea about, you know, the, the kind of emotion in this, you know, is fan, you know, the truth is in the eye and, um, you know, like a stallion chasing fear itself, watching God sit upon his shelf. We were restless. We were restless. It, this whole idea of like standing in line and hating your job and the, just the delivery was absolutely amazing. The next song was a pure love song, hardly any lyrics at all, easy on my soul. But some say love is, some say what is love, some say love is all around. The way Roger sings this, it's just brilliant, absolutely fantastic song, ballad, um, you know, absolutely wonderful. But the best track, and the track that is one of my favourite tracks by Free, is probably the closest they got to hard rock or heavy rock, if you like, the heaviest thing they ever did. And it's called Seven Angels, which is a song written by um, Paul Rogers. If you see me flying across the sky, there I go, I'm, a high, I'm flying high, six white horses, a chariot made of gold, seven lovely angels by my soul. But he sings it like he's, he's on the cliff top. The wind is howling and storm clouds are gathering. And he's just singing this from his heart. He's pulling his heart out and it's just, it's just dense, heavy, thick, treacly music, but it's just got so much feeling. And he's, it, I, it made me feel like whatever kind of teenage angst I was going through, I was gonna be all right. I was gonna make it, I was gonna, I could do this. You know, I've just stepped out, out of my grave. There I go, I ain't no slave. In my right hand is a sword of truth. In my left hand is a fire of love. I call to the land, I call to the sea, I call to the sky. Lord have mercy, won't you hear me? I was, that's me, I was there. How do I, where do I fit in? What should I be doing in my life? Where am I going? Um, I listened to this and I thought, yeah, I just identified with this kind of pure angst of like lyrics where you could interpret them to your own ends. I didn't need anyone to tell me what this meant. And it just meant something to me, it meant something to me. And that's the thing about music, isn't it? It's subjective, it's what it means to me. And as I look behind me, what do I see? A pair of golden wings that seem to be attached to me. Wings on my back. I've got to fly away. I just can't wait till tomorrow. I've got to fly away. There I go. And then we just move in to this driving rock sound with the guitars wailing. That was a song that just gave me so much well, spiritual hope, I suppose. It, it just really, really, um, it really, really, did it to me. I had this for, I think it was, could have been my uh, 20th birthday, I think, um, as a, uh, and, and I just thought it was superb, absolutely brilliant. I'm gonna go through the different versions and this and the two CD versions, and then I'll see you on the other side of that. So this is Heartbreak, and this is my original vinyl one, and it isn't from 1973. I was slowly, as a teenager, um, saving up using my apprenticeship money to buy the free albums one after the other and it was it took a long time There were so much other things I wanted to buy and so when it came around to birthdays and and uh, You know Christmas I always used to put down some of the out uh, bands that I was just trying to collect their back catalogue and free one of them and So this I think I got in about 1979 um, so this is the uh, the UK pressing the, the version of the island label I got is the sunset one so I think this dates it probably uh, in the late 70s I would think so any of you out there who know about this stuff will probably be about to tell me which one this is so the album 1972 although most of the action was in 73 it did come with a inner sleeve um, showing the picture of the the kind of more recent lineup as the lineup was of the band at that time and also with the lyrics as well on the other side, which was great um, to see what an accomplished lyricist um, Paul Rogers had become. Before that, I'd managed to get hold of the, a single, which was obviously Wishing Well, which is one of my favourite um, free songs of all time. Um, this is a, I think it's a US pressing, I think, um, but I bought it. Um, quite easily, I think, from W.H. Smith's and the B-side was Let Me Show You. The first version I bought on CD was when I bought um, 
this set of remasters, which had pictures of when you put them all together, Kossoff on one side and Rogers on the other. Um, and these, this was the version which came, what year was this? Um, 2002. And these came with lots of extra tracks. As you can see here, the Wishing Well, the US mix, let me show you. The B-side, Muddy Water, alternative vocal, Hand Me Down, Turn Me Around, prospective album track that didn't make it, Heartbreaker rehearsal version, Easy On My Soul. And inside was the typical fantastic little essay from David Clayton. Um, storing lots of pictures and then a background to where all the tracks were. Some of them obviously came from the box set Songs of Yesterday, which I've done a separate video on. Um, and some were unique to these um, singular uh, re releases, which was excellent. And I thought the sound of those was, was fine. Um, but then news around the now spinning uh, magazine Facebook group started to say that these weren't as good as the new one, the new remasters, which came out in 2016. And so I went and bought them all over again. And I have to say this, th this version is better. Um, and I did actually, you know, prefer this and I bought them all on this new these new remasters these have no extra tracks which means you end up buying both if you're an uber fan like me and so this is just the basic vanilla album remastered some photos from the time um, it does have the lyrics which is good as the other one didn't but it did have extra tracks. <laughs> um, and some pictures that I hadn't seen before. And there's the, so that's the information on that. Um, and so I, I do prefer the sound on the 2016 remasters, but if you want the extra tracks, then you'll end up tracking down this, which are now out of print. That's Heartbreaker. If you, if you want to get into free, then, all the albums are essential. They all tell a story that's unique to themselves. They all progress. They all have moments. There are no bad moments on any of them. Um, and to anyone, to anyone, to any younger viewers, the great thing about being alive now, as you watch this in modern times, is that you can go and find anything. And I think if you've recently watched Stranger, things and you've seen Kate Bush run up the hill and up the charts. It's the fact that music can connect to all of us at different times. So as I've talked about a song like Come Together in the Morning and what it means to me, that song will talk to people in exactly the same way, depending on what's going on in your life. But this, oh, look at that cover. That is gotta be one of the most iconic album covers it just captures the mystery and the majestic feel of being, you know, of rock music. You know, that, you know, that, you know, that would be a great t-shirt. This is a Riverside t-shirt. I haven't got um, I haven't got that, but that would be a great t-shirt, would it not? But yeah, I mean, an absolutely fantastic record. Absolutely brilliant. So, thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting me and listening to me as well on the podcast and stay safe, keep spinning those records, and I shall see you on my next video.